friends, grab your Bibles. We're in 2 Chronicles chapter 14, the early years of Asa's reign. So if you want to read along, then grab your Bible. And if you just want to listen, we're happy to have you here either way. When Abijah died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. There was peace in the land for 10 years. Asa did what was pleasing and good in the sight of the Lord his God. He removed the foreign altars in the pagan shrines. He smashed the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded the people of Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and to obey his law and his commands. Asa also removed the pagan shrines as well as the incense altars from every one of Judah's towns. So Asa's kingdom enjoyed a period of peace. During those peaceful years, he was able to build up fortified towns throughout Judah. No one tried to make war against him at this time, for the Lord was giving him rest from his enemies. Wonderful. When you seek the Lord and you live for him, he gives you rest from your enemies. As I told the people of Judah, let us build towns and fortify them with walls, towers, gates, and bars. The land is still ours because we sought the Lord our God, and he has given us peace on every side. And in relation to what I just said about when you seek to live for the Lord and he gives you peace, there are exceptions to that, as we've discussed before. Sometimes God will let you go through a period of trouble and turmoil because he wants to test your character or build your faith. There's a lot of different reasons why sometimes there are exceptions to that. Anyways, we march on. So they went ahead with these projects and brought them to completion. King Asa had an army of 300,000 warriors from the tribe of Judah armed with large shields and spears. He also had an army of 280,000 warriors from the tribe of Benjamin, armed with small shields and bows. Both armies were composed of well-trained fighting men. Once an Ethiopian named Zira attacked Judah with an army of a million men and 300 chariots. They advanced to the town of Marasha. So Asa deployed his armies for battle in the valley of Marasha. Then Asa cried out to the Lord his God. Very smart. O oh Lord, no one but you can help the powerless against the mighty. Amen. Help us, O oh Lord our God, for we trust in you alone. It is your name that we have come against this vast horde. O oh Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere men prevail against you. So the Lord defeated the Ethiopians in the presence of Asa and the army of Judah, and the army fled. Asa and his army pursued them as far as Gerar, and so many Ethiopians fell that they were unable to rally. They were destroyed by the Lord and his army, and the army of Judah carried off a vast amount of plunder. While they were at Gerar, they attacked all the towns in that area, and terror from the Lord came upon the people there. As a result, a vast amount of plunder was taken from these towns too. They also attacked the camps of herdsmen and captured many sheep, goats, and camels before finally returning to Jerusalem. Chapter 15, Asa's Religious Reforms. Then the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, son of Oded, and he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from the battle. Listen to me, Asa, he shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. For a long time, Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. That's really beautiful. And there's a reason for why this is being said, because Asa is going to need this in his future. During those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation fought against nation and city against city. For God was troubling them with every kind of problem. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard this message from Azariah the prophet, he took courage and removed all the detestable idols from the land of Judah and Benjamin and in the towns that he had captured in the hill country of Ephraim. He repaired the altar of the Lord, which stood in front of the entry room of the Lord's temple. Then Asa called together all the people of Judah and Benjamin, along with the people of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, who had settled among them. For many from Israel had moved to Judah during Asa's reign when they saw that the Lord 
his God was with him. The people gathered at Jerusalem in late spring during the 15th year of Asa's reign. On that day, they sacrificed to the Lord 700 cattle and 7,000 sheep and goats from the plunder that they had taken in battle. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, with all their heart and soul. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, would be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram's horns sounding. All in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him. And the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. King Asa even deposed his grandmother, Makkah, from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. He cut down her obscene pole, broke it up, and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed from Israel, Asa's heart remained completely faithful throughout his life. He brought into the temple of God the silver and gold from the various items that he and his father had dedicated. There was no more war until the 35th year of Asa's reign. So more is coming up because chapter 16 is on the final years of Asa's reign. Does Asa remain true to the Lord to the end? We're going to find out. So you have to come back to read what happens to the end of Asa's reign. Thank you so much for joining me in the reading of the Bible. Uh, in the next reading, we'll probably try to cover chapter 16 and 17, Jehoshaphat rules in Judah. So thank you so much, and I hope you are having a blessed day. Uh, maybe spend some time in prayer to God, give him gratitude, and thanks for all the wonderful things that he does for us. And maybe think about people that could benefit from your prayer, family, loved ones, people that haven't come to live for God or know God, or they've drifted, drifted <laughs> from the Lord. There's never not a good time to pray and praise and just shout out to the Lord how much we love him and how grateful we are for our lives because every good gift is from God. So thanks so much and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.